Venice is an island or a group of islands in a coastal lagoon. The level of the sea is rising. You can see it on landing stages and front doors. At this time of year there are trestles in the square to serve as walkways when the sea brims over. And as the sea rises, the city sinks. The ponderous basilica itself is said to have dropped 13 feet in its thousand years of life. Further, while the swamp licks its feet, white ants chew at its head. Roof timbers must be steadily replaced. Given the state of the ground, Venice's leaning for bell towers is misplaced. They tend to repay it by developing a leaning of their own. The most famous of them all, the Campanile of St. Mark's, actually collapsed in 1902 and squashed a cat. They put it up again, perhaps reflecting that there were plenty of cats left. Several buildings in Venice have only just been caught in time. The problem is of course worst for houses whose foundations are constantly lapped by water and most spectacular for the prized palazzi on the Grand Canal. Their patrician faces are distorted by decay, duchesses with toothache. For buildings that survive subsidence, there remains erosion. And what water can't do by itself, the wash of motorboats lends a hand with. Next March, a bill comes into force which will put all historic Italian cities into deep freeze. If the Venice Council can't get their pallid schemes approved in Rome before then, nothing will be done. Probably nothing will be done anyway. Passions on both sides are too strong. And the bitter truth is that nothing can be done. The charm of Venice is that people still manage to live here. Let them go, and the charm goes. But modernize the place to help them stay and the charm still goes. All that Venice can do is wait gracefully for the end.